Hey y'all, today we're making Chris's favorite cake ever. Absolutely from scratch, German chocolate cake layer with German chocolate ice. It's made on the stove top and it is out of this world delicious. And you have just got to try to make it because it's not hard at all. All right, we're gonna start with our shortening and our butter. You're gonna be using a half cup of butter and a half cup of shortening. And here's your shortening. Our oven is preheated to 350. So you're going to mix this till it gets fluffy. And then once it's fluffy, then we'll start adding eggs one at a time. Oh, and before we do that, let's go ahead and fix our flour. So I'm going to sift my flour today, which I don't typically have to do. So typically I would just put it in the bowl. But since I'm sifting it, I'm going to go ahead and put my baking powder in here with it while I sift it. And the baking powder is two teaspoons. Baking soda is a half teaspoon. Salt, half teaspoon. And we're just gonna sift this together into our bowl. Then we're gonna add the cocoa and whisk it some. I like to whisk my cocoa into my flour and that way it's uh, blended well before you add it to the cake. And once I'm finished sifting, I'm gonna let y'all see why I sifted today. You see those lumps in the bottom? I knew it was a little lumpy. If you ever um, think your flour is just a little bit lumpy, I always sift it if you're making a cake. If you refrigerate your flour, you need to sift it every time. So now we're gonna add our cocoa, and it's a half cup, it's a lot. Or right, I'm gonna use a quarter cup because my half cup scoop is really too big for this cocoa container. So you're gonna use a half cup. That's a quarter. And of course we're using delicious Hershey's cocoa. And we're also using white lily all-purpose flour for this cake. Now, white lily is a white winter wheat. It is a very light flour for cake and biscuits compared to most of the other flours you can purchase. Um, if you can't get white lily to make a cake, I suggest you buy cake flour. So we're just gonna whisk this in together. So that's ready for our dry ingredients to add. I'm gonna scrape my bowl. Even if I've got these little scrapers, this is such a large capacity mixer that I typically scrape it anyway. Just to make sure, you always wanna make sure all your ingredients are mixed in together good. And we're gonna let this mix and get nice and smooth and we'll start adding our other ingredients. Now it's nice and smooth and looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and add our vanilla, just a teaspoon. Now, I know that I don't use real German chocolate in my German chocolate cake, but Mama never did either, so we just love Hershey's chocolate, and that's what we use. Oh, and I'm going to start adding the dry ingredients, and I want to alternate them with a cup of evaporated milk, and that's all there is to it. It is so easy to make a homemade cake. There's absolutely nothing to it. Just grab your ingredients, have them sitting out, and just take the time out because you got a dishwasher, I'm sure, so use it. We're gonna put the guard on here.
Oh, this is the best batter ever. You know what's worth making a cake? Getting to taste the cake better. And after I get this mixed up, there's some flour on the edges and I'm gonna push that back down in there good and we're gonna make sure everything's mixed up good. And then we'll take the beaters off here and get this in a pan. Now today, my husband's favorite is what, Chris? German chocolate. Yes, he loves it. He loves for me to make a layer cake because then he's got the delicious icing in between the layers. And you know, I have done that cake twice. And today I'm just gonna do a sheet cake because I think a lot of y'all would cook it um, if you could just get it, it, you know, a sheet cake form. Once you add your flour, you need to mix it about two minutes and that's about all you need to mix it. And then we're gonna get it in our sheet pan. Chris just reminded me that I'm using a German mixer to make my German chocolate cake. This mixer is made in Germany. It is a bang up, wonderful, powerful mixer. I love it. So, at least I'm using a German mixer to mix up my cake. Boy, this cake batter is absolutely gorgeous. It's thick, it's creamy, and it's a really light milk chocolate. The German chocolate's not a real dark chocolate, it's a real light chocolate. And this is my personal homemade recipe, and it's absolutely delicious. I encourage you to give it a try. baking spray and I use so much of it and the little baker's joy can barely has any in it and that thing is full my homemade cakes that have two and a half cups of flour make a nice tall cake um, whether you use it in round layers or sheet cake layers um, you're gonna have plenty of batter the cake mixes uh, don't have enough batter in them anymore but I will tell you, this is a nice, when you use evaporated milk in your cake mixes, in your homemade ones, it makes it a nice and a soft crumb too. And if you just really love a soft crumb like a cake mix gives you and you're just crazy about it, because a homemade cake's never gonna give you a crumb like that, uh, the only way to get that is to add some pudding mix to it or I think if you add cornstarch, it makes a big difference too. Because this is a sheet cake pan, um, you got a lot more cake to cook. So when you're making a sheet cake compared to round layers, I think you should turn the temperature down to 325, any, no matter what you're making. So we're gonna slide this in the oven and bake it at 325. Now, after watching that rise in the oven, I'm sure you saw that my cake mixes have plenty of batter. And it took it almost an hour. And if you have it down at 325, it'll keep it from getting too brown. I'm gonna let this sit out at room temperature for a few minutes until the pan is cool enough to touch. And then we'll flip it upside down and let it cool on the cooling rack. I'm gonna flip this out on this parchment paper. And then I'm gonna pick it up and put it on the cooling rack. The first thing we're going to do is add two sticks of butter, which is a full cup of butter, to a non-stick saucepan. Now, I give you this recipe online, and it is the microwave recipe, but today I'm doing it on the stovetop. It's easy either way. It's the same ingredients, pretty much the same steps. Now, our butter's melting. It's doing really good. Now, we're going to add two and two-thirds cup of sugar. That's two, one and two thirds. Two cups and two thirds of a cup. Now we've got four eggs right here and I'm gonna beat them. And we're gonna go ahead and pour in two and two third cup of evaporated milk. And we're gonna go ahead and add these eggs. You wanna go ahead and get your eggs in there because you don't want them to scramble. So you want everything to be cool when you add your eggs. So we're gonna mix it up. 
it's a lot like pudding um, and then with just coconut it's just got a lot more butter in it than pudding does it has a thickener like flour or cornstarch but now this don't I'm taking a whisk and whisking this good now this is a non-stick pan so I'm not really scraping it I'm just stirring the ingredients so now you could beat up all your ingredients really well with a whisk before you add it to your pot. But then you would just mess up another dish. So I just chose to do it this way. Now we're gonna add a dash of salt. Now what, what the, um, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna cook this until it starts thickening. Now it's not gonna get thick, thick like pudding. And if you cook it too long, the butter is going to separate from the cream. So once it's nice and creamy, then you just take it off the stove. It looks good. It looks nice and uniform. And I've got it on a pretty high temperature, so we're just waiting on it to get hot. It takes it about eight to 10 minutes. All right, I've got my board. I'm just gonna put it on top of my cake and we're gonna flip it over. And you can use your hands and kind of see how much room you got around your cake so that you can try to center it pretty good. All right, you can already tell it's starting to get a little thicker. Look, look on the spoon. See how it looks? And it's starting to get creamy. We want it just a little bit thicker than that. Now, once it starts thickening, it is good to stir it. It's getting really close. This one is hard to describe to people how it should look. But now it's nice and really, I think it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's almost thick like potato soup. It really is. So we're going to add our pecans, about a cup and a half of pecans. And you're gonna add, I'm gonna turn it off, and you're gonna add a whole bag of Baker's Sweetened Coconut. And this is, let me see, 14 ounces. Now, Baker's Coconut is way moister than the store brands. So now you're just going to put your coconut in. And this does make a lot of icing. So uh, you can refrigerate what you don't use and ice some brownies or something. It's pretty much a double recipe because I don't think that the smaller recipe is ever enough to ice anything. And when this starts to cool, it'll get a little thicker and be a little easier to ice with. Now I'm a cake decorator, so I can actually ice a cake with German chocolate icing even when it's liquidy like this. Uh, but a lot of people can't. I can even like ice and layer cake when it's like this because I hold it up and do it at an angle. Look at this gorgeous German chocolate icing. And a lot of people call it pecan coconut icing. And we are gonna have to let it cool a little bit unless I trim the sides off to be equal because this pan that I cooked this in is angled. And so it's gonna be really hard to ice uh, the sides of it. It's really weird. Guess we'll just have to eat that, won't we? The, cr the crust? Yeah. Yeah, it's crunchy. Well. See, that looks a lot easier to ice because it's flat. Mm -hmm. Not sure. Some of these pans today. Now I'm going to be able to ice the sides a lot easier, y'all. Mmm, don't that look good? So you can just kind of push it and then spread it like that. Just push it a little bit and spread it a little bit. Push a little bit and spread it a little bit, but you gotta be fast. And this, as soon as it starts cooling, it's gonna get thicker and be easier to work with. A lot of people wouldn't try to work with it when it's like this consistency. But I'm not a lot of people. Mm -mm -mm, that looks good, don't it? And you couldn't get enough icing on that cake if you had to. 
There ain't never, you can never have too much. There right? ain't never enough icing on a German chocolate. And once these sides start cooling down, yeah. you can come back add to it. and add, um, because this icing, like I said, is still hot, really hot. Um, but you can tell it's already getting a little thicker on the edges where it's getting cooler. And so it's up to you. You can put two layers on it if you want to on the sides. And just take your spatula and scrape up the edge. That's why I like to use foil because it comes off really easy. You can poke holes in it if you want to. Wouldn't hurt nothing. Let's do it. Hmm. And you could do this in this pan too. All right, y'all wanna see it? I'll pick it up so y'all can see it. It's heavy. German. It's a big old cake. Chocolate. She, boy, don't that look good, y'all. And it really wasn't hard at all to make. It is not hard to make German chocolate icing. I cannot believe that people will actually eat the German chocolate icing that comes out of a can next to the cake mixes. It doesn't taste anything like this. I mean, it really doesn't taste anything like this. All right, we're gonna give it a try. Yum. That is so good, even if it is my recipe. Mm -mm -mm. The layer is nice and moist, and the icing is perfect. Now that is a homemade cake, just like Mama made from scratch. We'll see you next time on Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya. Anytime it's over now, Tammy, she just showed you how.